All right, guys, uh, I was just wanting to give you an update here and kind of show you how we framed up the upper roof section. Uh, I wasn't able to really record much of that yesterday because I was going pretty hard, but let's pan up here and we'll show you the slope and the shed roof. As you can see, we've got uh, extra overhang on the back uh, to give us about a five foot, six foot section back there uh, where it'll be dry space. I'm going to have to put some uh, posts in the ground to support that. I think I'm going to use oil field pipe because, you know, I want something that's not going to rot away. So anyways, uh, basically what I had to do was build up a one foot knee wall, I guess we'll call it, up here on the front to support these rafters and to give me the desired slope that I have for this roof. And I actually found a great resource online. I'll insert a link in here, or maybe not a link, but I'll insert how to get to this website. If you're doing a building with a shed style roof, this thing was a valuable resource because you can go in there and you can kind of play with the numbers and get the angle and the look that you want before you you know, have to do it trial and error up on the wall. So on this website here, it gives you the uh, angles and stuff that you need to cut to get your plumb cuts on these ends here. Now, some of these, uh, like this end one here, I had to kind of make this up as I went. It's kind of the, uh, what they call the raker. It's what hangs over and gives you your overhang on the side of your building. And I didn't go as wide as I originally wanted. I wanted to go about a foot on each side, but the reason I went ahead and went with about, uh, I think it was two inches is what it worked out on each side, on, on just the sides. The reason I went with that dimension is because that's under eight feet wide, so I can use sheets of OSB material uh, from side to side and I'll just barely have to shave off like a quarter inch off of it uh, because I was just under uh, 96 inches on the overall width of this building. So I did that to save money. Uh, if, I, if I didn't care about that and wood wasn't so expensive right now, I probably would have went ahead and, and thrown out some one foot uh, rakers on each side or overhangs. And it kind of looks like a ladder if you look at it. But what I ended up doing was I just took in some uh, hopefully you can see that shooting up into the sun here. I put some little blocks in there in between the two studs just to give me the desired uh, stand out off the wall. So I'll have a little bit of overhang here, but we're going to do metal siding as well. So honestly, the overhang on the sides really isn't very important. Uh, although this is the side that's going to get the most sun and stuff like that. So I'm going to, I'm planning on putting like either uh, barn tan siding uh, or a, uh, uh, what do they call that R panel or PBR panel? I've heard it called sometimes. Uh, but here's a look at the front. I went with about an 18 inch overhang and we're still gonna have another two by four here on the end that's gonna cap all those, uh, kind of my trim board. So let me show you the inside here. Turn up the light here a little bit. I wasn't real sure how to make my connections up here. so. What I ended up doing was buying these uh, Simpson Hurricane straps and I put those all on the center ones because those were easy to do and I could get to them fairly easily. I wasn't able to use them on the two that are in line with the side wall though. So what I did here, I'm gonna have to get up above it. Let's see if I can do this. Okay, let me get you some light on that. There we go. Okay, so what I did there is I just bought some little angle brackets for the insides of these outermost rafters here. I did that on both sides. And then from the outside, since it was flush with this knee wall down below here, uh, since it was flush with that, I was able to put gang nail or gang plate on the outside of that and nail it in really well. And so that right there is nice and rigid. We're not gonna have to worry about that at all. I'm real happy about that. And all the rest of these, you can see I haven't nailed these center rafters in yet. I want to have a little flexibility whenever I uh, uh, put my outer board on. That way I can move these around a little bit. And it'll all make sense when we start putting it together, but climb down from here. Anyways, uh, just a quick update. Once we put all this skin on the outside, this OSB sheathing on the walls, I mean, this thing is stout. It ain't going anywhere. I feel really good about it. And the more we frame up on the roof, the more it locks everything all together. So that's what I'm gonna be working on today is just getting all this framing done and getting the front and the back fascia board mounted on there. And 
as you can see, we put the Lowe's house wrap on here too. So some people were talking about, oh, you know, and I get what they're saying. You know, I'm not, uh, I'm definitely not criticizing them for making this, this, this assertion, but they were like, oh, why did you gap those panels like that? You should have went ahead and butted them together because that will, you know, reduce the chances for leaking and stuff like that. But again, I said it in the last video, but maybe I, maybe I didn't say it clear enough. The whole, the manufacturer says it right there on that tag. I doubt I can get you a good enough image that you can read it, but it tells you right there that you need to have an eighth inch spacing minimum on all of your ends and sides and all that stuff. So the reason they do that is because if this stuff gets wet at all, I mean, maybe even dew might do it. I don't know, uh, but definitely if it gets rained on, what can happen is it'll expand because it's OSB and it sucks up water like a sponge. And because the way it does that, it could actually, uh, buckle in between the studs. It won't come off the studs more than likely, but it'll push out. And then whatever siding material you're trying to put on there won't look right. It won't look straight, you know, and I didn't mention that either in the last video that one of the reasons, one of the primary reasons that you want to run your sheets horizontally rather than vertically is that it ties everything together. That's one main reason. But the other reason is, is that it'll flatten out these walls for you. You know, no matter how long and hard you try, when you go over to Lowe's or Home Depot and start looking through their wood, you're going to have a hard time finding good straight boards. And I didn't really mention in the framing, but when you're doing your framing work, you want to put all the crowns like up. And th in this case, what I did is I crowned all the walls out. So the crowns go out and on the roof up here on the ceiling, you want those crowns to go up. So Hopefully that makes sense to you. So when you're looking down the, the, what I'm talking about is, if you don't know, is crowning the wood is when you look down the wood, uh, you sight it kind of like you would sight a gun or something like that. And when you look down that wood, if it has some curve, you know, some upward curve to it, then that's going to be the crown. That's going to be the high part. And you want to match all those up because if you, what you, if you end up doing it and you're not, you don't crown your boards, you'll end up with a real wavy, non-straight wall. But if you crown them all and they're all going the same way, when you tie it all together and put this sheathing on, then everything will be nice and flat for you and you'll just have a better finished product. So to each his own, I don't care. You know, if you guys want to butt your sheets together and you know, if you're, if you're fast enough and you're get your siding on quick enough and it never gets wet or you get your Lowe's tape and Lowe's wrap on there and all that stuff and it never gets wet, then maybe you can get away with butting the sheets together and maybe it would be a little bit tighter but i'm just going by what the manufacturer said because i've watched several youtube videos on a lot of this different stuff and if you don't do everything exactly like the manufacturer says somebody will come in there and criticize you and say oh you're giving misinformation or you're telling people to do it the wrong way blah 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 again use your own discretion i'm just building it this way because i'm actually practicing up because uh my my point is is i want to kind of make this my proof of concept to my wife because she's never seen me build anything on my own like this on such a scale. I've been involved in several builds and stuff, but never anything, you know, 100% on me like this. And I'm trying to kind of prove to her that, look, I can build this shed. I can make this thing to where it's going to be framed up exactly like a house would. And the only difference is, is that, you know, it's a smaller scale. So I'm trying to get it to where basically with not just me by myself, I'll probably have to enlist the help of my buddies and stuff like that. But, and some of my family will have a wall raising type of a deal where, you know, I'll get all my walls built on the ground, get the concrete slab and I'm not going to pour the concrete. I'll pay, you know, I'll pay for some of that stuff. Uh, but the stuff in like the plumbing, the concrete work, that kind of stuff I have to pay for, but actually building the walls and erecting the walls, tying everything together, sheathing everything. I'd kind of like to do that. So, We'll see how all that goes. A lot of that's time, money, and resources and stuff like that. And anyways, we're going to continue on on this. I'm going to get these tied in and get that front board attached. All right, so here's the plan. I've got a uh, little temporary board up here that's just going to hold that in for me. Uh, I'm having to do this stuff a lot of this by myself so uh, because of that it's going to be hard to get that board lined up there so I put a little board there on the bottom of that uh, outermost rafter uh, screwed it on there so that I can quickly take it off when I'm finished uh, but now what I've got to do is attempt to get up here and prove the concept I believe what I can do next is hold my board up there I've already got it cut to length 
Uh, so I'm going to hold my board up there and make sure everything's looking good on the ends. And then I'm going to attempt to uh, screw the two ends, the two outside ends on. That's what I'm mainly worried about is getting those nice and straight. And then I'll be able to come in and hopefully even out some of these boards in the middle because some of them, uh, I got them from Lowe's and a lot of them were twisted and I'm going to have to do some work to get everything lined up. But I just want to show you here how we're going to get this front fascia board attached. All right, that's one side. It fought me a little bit to get that corner uh, right where I wanted it. And I'm probably gonna have the same deal on the other side. Uh, but that's basically how I'm attaching that fascia board. And then what I'm gonna do, once I've got everything on the ends good, then I'll go back and slide all those uh, studs that you see that I didn't bolt down in the center. I'll slide those forward and line and square everything up as I go using my clamp to kind of twist it into position because a lot of these boards are twisted. Uh, once I get all that done, I'll go back in and nail everything up on the inside and we should be good to go. All right, now I just have to repeat the process on the back end. It really tied it all together. So, really happy about this. I think it's gonna be a really good shed. It'll probably last my lifetime and then so. Just need to do the same thing back here. All right, I'm going to get after it. We're going to leave you here for now. I'll come back in a little bit and show you the finished product. But you can see some of the twist in those boards, hopefully. Like that one there, it's twisted that way a little. Actually, both of those are. So I'm going to have to fight with that twist and get it as straight as I can uh, before I screw everything down. That's what I was doing on the front there with the clamp. So, All right, guys, I just thought I'd show you where we uh, got to to end this day off. I've still got some framing to go up here. In this little wedge area, I'm going to have to put some little pieces in there just to connect that. It's mainly just to nail my uh, that little piece of OSB that's going to be a wedge-shaped piece right there. It's just a nailer, basically. Uh, I've seen guys actually frame that up like a proper wall frame, but I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to turn the studs, even with that stud that runs that way, and just use it like a nailer. It'll be fine. This thing's overbuilt as it is, as a few people pointed out in my last video that I put up on it. But let me show you what we got done. Got the front fascia board installed, and these outside boards here are going to be my fascia boards. They're nothing fancy, just a normal 2x4. Uh, but mainly I wanted you to see I got the front and the back installed here, and once I did that and got everything lined up, uh, it stiffened up the whole building. I mean, it's just incredible. So give you a shot here of what we did I did pretty good I only had one spot here I'll show you my tattletale spot I had one spot where I have a little gap right there 
like that stud ended up being just a hair short maybe a blade width short so what i may do is uh, i've got some paint shim or paint sticks at home some shims i may unscrew that and put a shim in there and screw it back on it's actually fine i could probably caulk it up and hide it but uh yeah coming right along i'm gonna have to support this end of the structure here uh, with just a couple of posts sticking down in the ground uh, because I've essentially made a big wing here. But uh, we're coming right along. Next up in the process will be decking the roof. And then uh, I've been shopping around. I think I'm going to get a peel and stick type of a product that you put on the roofing before you put the steel on, basically. So uh, you'll put the roof decking on first. And I'm using this same stuff here that I used on the walls. So I'll put that roof decking on first with the shiny side down. Uh, began, again, this is a well house, so the whole idea is that I'm keeping my heat inside the building. And usually you can keep a well from freezing up with just like a 60 watt bulb or something if you keep it relatively close to the well and, the, and everything that could freeze there. So that's the plan here. I may end up putting some vents in the top up here eventually. I thought about putting in a little small window just for, it would make it look kind of cool, but... I'm not going to do that. It's just going to complicate my process. So now I'm on the hunt for a used uh, 36 inch wide door and I'm going to have to buy my siding. So I'm looking into that. I can't decide if I'm going to go barn tin on the lower section and uh, R panel on the roof or just all, all R panel or exactly how I'm going to do that. Let me know down in the comments what colors do you think I should go with on this. Uh, my plan, I'm in a hot state here, so I usually tend to go with a light colored roof. Although, since I'm trying to create heat to keep a well pump from freezing out, I'm considering going with a darker color roof. Uh, so let me know if you guys have any suggestions down below. Uh, I'm probably gonna go with a 26 gauge metal on everything. And uh, there are some guys on uh, Craigslist where you can go down there and get it cut to whatever length you need. And then I'll, the only thing hard about it will be that wedge shape up there at the top. but. Anyways, coming along real good, and I hear that fishing hole calling me, so I'm going to wrap it up for today, get down there and catch me a couple bass, and then head home, get a shower. Anyways, guys, hope you enjoyed this content. Hit the thumbs up if you don't mind. Subscribe if you're not subscribed for more. And until then, we'll see you next time.